more than often. Mia bolstered about the films she watched at her friend's sleepover. Eavesdropping on conversations she felt mature enough to join in on. Her head levels just above her elbows, her voice projects loud enough to be heard. Mia talks of how her friend's mother would allow them to watch horrors. She spoke of zombies, guts, and men wielding chainsaws. At 11, she knows the supernatural like toddlers know Peppa Pig, the spirits that walk while you sleep. Mia smiles at our shocked faces, feeling one step ahead. That, I know what you're talking about. You can't keep everything away from me, type attitude. Today, Mia is ponytailed, wearing a black jersey dress she thought was too big for her. Black shoes, black tights with sequins, and a red jacket she wore against her will, but with enough sense to not raise a lip to her mother. Ever the inquisitive princess, her coconut scent rose towards the sun as we made our way inside. Inside, I see candles and people. You see, the space is lit, yet the mood feels damp. There are no conversations. Just the bereaved speaking through tears. Just the hands that hold each other. And this silence that Mia walks through, clinging onto her grandfather, knowing that when she lets go, she'll be on her own. <laughs> I'm one seat away from her, but it feels like a mile. How do I explain death to a child whose feet barely touches the ground when sat? These hymns that prepare your heart. Mia's mouth is still, but her eyes hold the casket, following its every move until it disappears from view. I am one seat away from. Are you okay? Holding a younger sister in my arms, and the youngest is sat with the mother. They both look on. Asking why uncle's in a box, will he come out soon? Is he angry? Is he sleeping? If so, can they wake him? And I'm there filled with tears for they seem to think this is some kind of game where they await the surprise of him bursting out. But the youngest recognizes sadness. Pointing to her mother's tears is something weird. I mean, why, why cry when surrounded with people you normally laugh with? So she persists with the questions. Mommy, why are you crying? Mommy, why are you sad? Mommy, mommy, mommy. Mommy shakes her head in dismay and says, nothing, darling. It's okay. In this space, where sniffles and babies wailing take precedence, where tissues soak lost and crumbles, where family members walk to the podium, standing firm, they breathe in disbelief, their voices scaling in tone. It's like pain to my eyes just witnessing what is going on. Like Mia is sat, one seat away from me, both index fingers blocking her ears, blocking her ears from how we live the good life. The friendliest face to see. The charmer, the boyfriend, the brother, the son, the uncle. How his favourite music was this or how he was too young to die. Because she wants him alive. For him to hug her to a point that she feels her bones touch and his breath foraging through her hair. That feeling of hearing his voice. His soft yet firm English with a hint of patois. Again because she just saw him. The other day she just heard him. The other day Mia is blocking her ears because no matter how fabricated her stories were, she knows that they were never real. Mia knows that when she wakes, she will not encounter ghosts that bumps in the night she knows that when she wakes she will not be missing a limb this casket however it's real it's so real every sharp curve and wooden frame and uncle's inside the casket opens Mia's eyes are covered as she's escorted outside the silence then breaks this chorus of loss that we walk through, this song that's heard once, that's heard twice. This song that we're all praying and wishing that it's not real. This song of tears, just wishing that it feels that gaping hole. For if this was a movie, I would be in control. But this is life. And every day is a lesson. <laughs>